Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today I'm here to introduce my new out-of-the-park baseball season. And I thought it might be fun to go back to 1896. All the way back to 1896. Because of all of the out-of-the-park seasons that I've seen on YouTube... I have not seen anybody go back to the 1890s. So, not only am I back in the 1890s, but I'm taking the Louisville Colonels, who were terrible in real life. They were 38, I think they were something like 38 and 96, and they finished in 12th place in the National League. Now, here's our schedule. We're already 0-3. We lost 9-3 on opening day to the... Uh, Washington Senators. Then we dropped a doubleheader to them, uh, 12 to 11, and then 16 14 in the uh, in 10 innings. And um, actually, right now we have a, we are playing um, we're playing the Columbus Salons, I believe is what they're called. And we have a game that's been suspended in the eighth inning, eighth or ninth inning, something like that, and it's 12-12. So a, a couple of humorous notes about this. First of all, if you know anything about uh, baseball in the 1800s, there's a couple things you know. First of all, or if you, well, if you're a baseball historian at all, in the least bit, you would realize that there are not many uh, starting pitchers, and the pitchers can go on very few days rest. Uh, and they, and one good thing I really love about this, see, I'll tell you, and I'm going to give you all the reasons why I took the Colonels. But um, one of the reasons that I went back to the 1890s is because in the 1890s, pitchers pitched complete games all the time, good or bad, terrible or indifferent they pitched complete games all the time. So their, um, I, I figured that their stamina bars would not get used up very quickly. And so far, that's been true. Now, they've been terrible. My pitchers have been terrible. But the stamina bar has not been used up quickly at all, which I really like. I like to have the option to keep a guy out there if I have to keep him out there or want to keep him out there. Um. And the reason that I took the Colonels, and they, uh, first of all, I just, I always love that name, the Louisville Colonels. There used to, there was actually a minor league, I think there was a minor league baseball club called the Louisville, or maybe they were the Louisville Bats. Yeah, I think they were the Louisville Bats. But anyway, I always liked that name, and they had a couple of good players. They had, they do have a few good players that you might recognize. Roger Connor is on the team. He's the first baseman. But um, the reason I took the Colonels as bad as they are, really, is that they are terrible, and therefore, anything I do that's good, like if I win, for instance, that's just a plus, it's a plus if I win with this team. And, um, you know, and then I won't, you know, I won't complain about, because one of, if you know, if you've seen some past videos, you know, one of my my big complaints about this, the game, was that it didn't seem like it was very realistic. Well, now we're going back to the 1890s, which was long before I was born, and I'm taking a team that's terrible, so there's only, the only place to go is up from there. Um, so it will be interesting to see how that, um, works out. Now, the, the mode I'm playing in is I'm playing with the regular career mode. However, I am also playing with the career mode where it, uh, resets the, uh, player, um, like the player bars, the player ratings that I've showed you before. It resets those at the beginning of every season. So that's where we are with that. And so now, anyway, we are 0-3. We have a game that's suspended. I don't know if they're going to put us into that game. I'm just going to hit play next game against the Salons. We'll see how that goes. 
Okay, so here's our, this is our lineup right here. We're still at home. We've played every game so far at home, and our pitcher is going to be Rip Egan. You got to love Rip Egan. Anybody out there? Anyone? Remember Rip Egan? Anyway, let's, uh, let's get started with this game. And let me turn down the sound just in case. I have the computer, I have the, uh, the cast-o-matic on uh, don't record computer sounds, but you never know. So, all right, so far so good. And you will see a lot of errors. There's a ton of errors, and I think that's one of the things that makes this fun, too, is that, you, you know, you, you know you're never really out of the game. It doesn't, you could be losing by five, six, eight runs. Doesn't matter because um, you're never really out of it because of the fact that everybody commits errors all the time. Whoa, that was a deep fly. Not going to see a lot of home runs either. This is the 1800s, so. There are also a lot of triples as well. So we got Billy Klingman up at the plate. Billy Klingman, the third baseman, for our Colonels. And he rips a hit. He's aboard. Nice. He's a stealing 65. Let's see if we can steal second with him. Woo! Is he out? Yeah, he's gunned down. God. All right. And then there's a base hit. Ah, I should have let him. They should have left him. Anyway. And again, as I usually like to play with out of the park, I'm just the manager. So I have a GM. And he um, is the guy that promotes players, get, you know, trades for players for me, you know, whatever. Now, the last time I checked in, in preseason, and, and this it does this in out of the park, does this all the time, where they will tell you what their expectation is. And um, before the season, the expectation of my owner was that I be competitive on the field. Well, we're 0 and 3, but we're 0 and 3, and we've lost three games by a combination of nine runs. So. You know, and with a collection of stiffs like the Colonels, I'd say that's pretty damn competitive. But um, I, I'm sure the owner will beg to differ. Now, it'll be interesting to see because I'm also, I'm in career mode and I'm on where I, um, where I can be fired if they want to fire me. Did we get him? No. So I can be fired from my job as manager. Now, I don't know really what the game does when that happens. I'm not sure. All right. Well, so far we're holding them. This is a, a tenuous tie right here. And there it goes. We're now losing by two, probably. Yeah. But again, we're losing two nothing here. But that is not at all terrible. Oh, well, yeah, if you had thrown that ball somewhere, that would have been nice. But that's not bad at all. Two nothing. But, like, if you play like a, um, if you play a, uh, not a, what do I want to say? A, a modern day game, and you're down two or three nothing after the first couple of innings, you're going to, you're probably going to lose the game. But here, I'm down by whatever. What is it now? Five? Four? Down by four. But there's no, you know, I'm still in this game, really, as, I think, as you'll see. Now, maybe not this particular game. Is he out? No. So it's 6 nothing. Now it's getting a little out of control. We really have to get a hold of this pretty quickly. 7 nothing. I'll tell you, I'll show you what I'm talking about with the pitchers. See, he's still in the green. 
he's, you know, getting his ass completely handed to him, but he's still in the green. However, it's, I don't know how long that's going to last because he's really up, giving up some runs. This is, this is a little out of the, uh, yeah, I'm in a lot of trouble in this game. But that's, I mean, that's fine, though. It's a, it's a terrible team. It was a terrible team in real life. Any game I win would be, you know, it would be amazing. And I don't know if you remember back from the schedule, but there's some bad teams on there. The Baltimore Orioles of the 1800s, a major league team in the National League, they weren't very good. But this guy, um, Rip Egan, is also terrible. It's 12 he, I'm already down 12 nothing in the second inning. Now, this is a fun game to watch. Although the owner is probably not having a lot of fun watching it. But, all right, so he retires the side. It's 12 nothing. So we've got um, McGuire, our catcher, is up. And he's out. Now, see, I sit here and tell you that, you know, the other team will make a lot of errors and we'll get on base and we'll be all over the place, too. But that really hasn't really so much happened yet. Although this guy just had a triple. Blake, my, I believe he's the right fielder. Henry Lynch, our center fielder. He's going to knock in a run, at least. So now it's 12-1. We're in good shape. Rip Egan gets a walk. Love that. Billy Klingman. You, I, you, one thing I will say, you've got to have some patience to play this type of season of uh, out of the park, or really probably any baseball game that had an 1800s season. You would have to have a lot of patience because players are going to make errors. Pitchers are going to get, you know, pummeled. It's going to happen. Okay, so he's pitched a lot better this inning. But I've got to get some runs. Man, that was nice. He darted off the mound like a cat. All right, so we're down 12-1. Bid McPhee. Remember Bid McPhee? Anybody? Bueller? I don't know what happened there. All right, an infield hit. I'll take it. Monty Cross. And Bid McPhee goes to second on the pass ball. Uh, okay, Monty Cross, come on. Let's get a hit, man. Uh, no, that's not, that's not what I needed. All right, Fielder Jones. Fielder Jones, come on. Now, Fielder Jones, I believe, in this season was a rookie. And he's a guy that you might remember his name from baseball history. If you're a baseball historian and you just saw Roger Connor fly out. So I have one run. Here I am. I'm telling you how, you know, we scored all these runs in the, you know, past three or four games. And now I, I've got one through three plus innings, well, three innings and in coming to bat in the fourth. Now, Egan, now he settles down. Thanks for settling down now after you gave up 12 runs. Although that was a serious double right there. And see, this is what I love right here. He's still in the green. No pitcher, if you played like the 1980s or the 1990s or, you know, any time in the 2000s, if you if you had a pitcher give up 12 runs in three innings, he's not going to be in the green. But Rip Egan is. And he gets out of it. So now he's still got... We're still only down by 11. We're right in this thing. Deacon McGuire. Deacon McGuire. 
It's funny, too, when the outfielders drop the ball. It's hilarious. And it does happen. All right, so we got a walk. We got a man on board here. Henry Lynch. Henry Lynch, they drop, the catcher drops the ball, so the runner advances to second. Come on, man. Come on. Get me a run. All right, that's not going to happen unless he drops it, and he didn't. And now we've got Rip Egan. Rip Egan couldn't get aboard. You're also probably talking about an era where pitchers were not totally incompetent with the bat like they are nowadays. Oh, see, Roger Connor, man, this guy, he's made all kinds of errors so far. I thought he was a good first baseman, but apparently not. Apparently I was wrong about that. He drops another one. Come on, Connor, hold on to it. Do I have to come down there and play first base for you? My God. All right. So there was two strikes on him, and he flies out okay. They, they held him. I mean, those, those runs will be unearned runs anyway if they come home. And they aren't so far. And there you go, base hit, but that's an unearned run. 13 to 1. Really, I'm telling you. I mean, I showed you. I showed you on the schedule so you can see for sure that I did score all the runs I said I scored. But in this game, no, we don't feel like it. Probably too tired. Billy Klingman. He's out. And Bid McPhee. This is a fun game, but I got to say, it's really a lot more fun when you go back to the 1800s. Monty Cross. Now, see, if I, and th that's the thing. If I'd taken a good team from, 18, from 1896, uh, I'm going to say no. I need, I need runs and base runners. Um, so I held up the runner. If, if I took a good team from 1896 and I, they were having all these problems, dropping balls, uh, making errors, allowing runs, I would be, I'd probably be pissed. But because I have a terrible team from the eight from 1896, I'm not as upset about it. And it's uh, 13 to two, 13 to three, 13 three. We're getting up there. We're coming back. We're coming back. No, we're not. All right. That's the second out. Come on, let's knock in at least one more run here. Harry Blake. Harry Blake, no. All right, so it's 13-3. Ground ball, and this time Connor holds on to it. Thank you, Mr. Sunshine. And that's going to be a ground ball, and then the counter holds on to it again. Nice. I mean, you know, you got You cannot just chalk it up to, yeah, he's going to make the play, because he's he may not. So we're down 13-3, down by 10 runs here. Let's go. Lynch is up. I'm going to get the bullpen up anyway. Let's see. We'll get Ed Stein up in the bullpen. And Rip Egan is up just in time. So, hey, let's go back and pinch hit for Rip Egan. So now you see I got... Uh, Got some my pinch hitters here. I'm gonna go with uh, Tuck Turner. I always go with Tuck Turner. So we're gonna pinch hit for the pitcher with one down. Tuck Turner flies out, and Klingman's up, and Klingman is out. He flies out. 
So down 13, three, and Stein is ready, good. That's excellent, we're bringing Stein into the game. And I don't know, he struck out with a ball that was like right at his body. Come on, make the play, hold, no, he doesn't, he drops another ball. Connor, man, I don't, maybe he really wasn't a first baseman, I don't know, but this is, I mean, this is bad. Now, you know, of course, back in the 1800s, they basically were catching throws with their bare hand, just about. Oh, the shortstop makes an error. Two down, though. Maybe we can get out of it. No, we cannot. They rip a double. So it's 15-3. It's We're right in this thing. We got the salons right where we want them. Fly ball. All right, 15-3. Come on, let's go. We got to get 12 runs pretty quickly here. Bid McPhee at the plate. Ooh, and he gets a single. Nice. He's a stealing 65. Let's see if he can steal second. No, no, he can't. Didn't get a good enough lead. Let me... And uh, nah, with a strike, I don't want to try it again. Is that out? No. It's a fly out. It is an out, but not the kind of out, like out of the park is what I wanted. All right. That's a nice hit. We got two runners on, one out. We're poised to score another run or two here with Roger Connor, the guy that can't hold on to a thrown ball. I'm going to say no, because we need runs. We need runs and base runners. We don't need to be thrown out at the plate. Deacon McGuire. The Deacon. He flies out. And Harry Blake. Man, their first baseman, he's a sure-handed dude. He never drops anything. All right. Down 15-3. Yeah, we got Ed Stein in, so, yeah. Man, two-strike count allows a base hit to left. You hate to see that. All right, nice catch. No, nope, not going to get that one. All right, the salon. I don't know how we're tied with these guys 12-12 in the suspended game. That, by the way, was suspended due to rain. It just kept raining and raining and raining and raining, and then they finally called it, which you will see happen in Out of the Park. That is something you're not going to get in Strat. You play a Strat game, um, they may say something like there's a rain delay, and then they come back, but they come back and they always resume the game. But out of the park? No, our, out of the park, they're, they're striving for the real life thing. And it's 17-3. That's real life crawling up my butt. All right, so 17-3, bottom of the eighth. Henry Lynch is up. He strikes out. Okay, now, you know, now if the owner is worried, yeah. He, he, maybe he will, he, maybe he should be worried after this game. But what I would say is tell the general manager to get me some players, and then maybe we'll do better. It'll be interesting to see. A lot of things are going to be interesting if I can keep playing, you know, if I stick with the season, which I'm hoping to do. But it'll be interesting to see what happens, like when you you have a terrible season, 
do they fire you after one year? Do I get another year to try to prove myself? I'm going to say yes this time because we got to get some runs. And no, he's thrown out by six miles. You know, do they give you another year to try to um, prove something, you know, prove that you know, maybe they should keep you or do they just fire you immediately depending on how bad you are? in that first season. And you can see Ed Lynch is, now Ed Lynch is coming down, but I've brought him into our, already two or maybe two or three games, two, at least two. So I don't, maybe that's part of it. The one thing you would never know is like if the guy is, well, I mean, you would know by looking at the bar, I suppose. But, like, if he gives up a ton of hits, you're thinking, well, it's not necessarily because he's tired. It could just be because he was terrible. Oh, they dropped a foul ball. Oh, no, that was, a, that was a fair ball. But now it's a double play, so we're down. All right, so the game is almost over here. I mean, no way are we score. If we score 14 runs with two outs, that you would be witnessing history. But no, we're done. So we will we'll go and look at some end-of-the-game stats here. Columbus Salons, 3-2. and two. We're 0-4. Oh and like I said, we have a suspended game where we're tied with them 12-12 currently. Salons lamb base the Colonel 17-3. Yeah, you aren't joking. But, I mean, you can see right here, looking at the batting averages, I've got guys that are hitting well. 375, 500, 292, 571, 429. The team is hitting. Hell, even Egan is hitting 500. But then you get these performances, six innings pitched, 13 hits, 12 earned runs, six walks. And I don't know that he really, uh, I, I forgot how many runs he had when he left, but I don't know that all 12 should be earned. Um, let's go back up here. Yeah, we made four errors and two were by Roger Connor. So anyway, let's leave the game and we've got a. Date of first achievement, April 6th, 1896. First time Bid McPhee was four for four with a double, a run, a walk versus the Salon. Yeah. Now, that didn't do me a lot of good. So we're going to finish the day. And, hey, we can resume the game against the Salons. I'm going to do that right now. I am doing it. Okay, so... Um, yeah, and I got Bid McPhee at the plate, runners at second and third, no outs, and we are in the bottom of the eighth. I might win this game. You might be witnessing history, but who knows? Because we just made an out there. Monty Cross. Monty Cross, come on. Can anybody get on? I mean, we had a golden opportunity right there. Fielder Jones. No. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, we got to put in. Uh... All right, he's a new pitcher. Go back to game action. I brought in Carlton Molesworth, and he's not good. Make no mistake about it, but we're the home team. So, if we can just manage to get through this. Oh, couldn't make the play. I mean, this right here is going to be our best chance to win a game. Did he get him? He got him. Nice. Thrown out at second. You should not be doing that against us. You just sit back and wait. You're going to score enough run. All right, they got no runs off of Big Carlton Molesworth. So let's go to the bottom of the ninth. If we can score one run, just one stinking run, we win this game. And my owners were, all right, nice, double, double for Connor. I, I may have to bunt here. And you don't like to bunt with these guys because they can hit. 
That's not, that really wasn't the Colonel's problem, I'm going to say, I think. Oh, but he's terrible at bunting. All right. We'll let him hit. Oh, they walk him. They wanted nothing to do with Deacon McGuire. So we got Harry Blake up. Ooh, and he walks. I got the bases loaded. I just need to get one run in, and we're going to have our first win of the season. You're witnessing history here, folks. Harry Lynch, come on. Hit the ball to the outfield. Do something. Oh, come on. And nobody even struck out back then. Carlton Molesworth. You know you got to send the runner. And he does score, and we're going to win the game, and here we come. We're charging the field. Molesworth is our MVP. So there's our first win, 13 to 12. So we're going to leave the game. And uh, yeah, come back, win. You ain't joking. So after uh, losing 17 3, we win 13 12. And we have a win. And so now let's go to uh, let's go to my let's go to the manager's office. Your owner is unhappy at the moment. Yeah, well, if he would give me some pitching, maybe he wouldn't be that unhappy. Um, but let's go to uh, the standing board, and there we are, Louisville Colonels, one and four, along with Baltimore. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, especially my commentary, trying to liven it up a little bit with this bad Colonels team. But that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.